Hong Kong's most prestigious race, the BMW Hong Kong Derby, is just three weeks away, where 14 of the best four-year-olds will battle it out in a shot at once-in-a-lifetime glory in a race worth $18 million. Here on the show today, we're going to look back at what's happened so far in the four-year-old classic series and look ahead to what we can expect on the big day on the 17th of March. I'm pleased to say that we haven't got just one but two special guests on the show today. Tom Biddington, racing editor from the South China Morning Post. Welcome along. Earlier this week you wrote that the Derby's wide open after Sunday. How Sunday's events changed your opinion on what's happened in the four-year-old series? Yeah, I certainly think it's a very wide open event. Um, the first four across the line in the Classic Mile were the same first four across the line in the Classic Cup, just a slightly different order. And then we throw in some of the uh, outsiders like uh, Waikuku and Enrichment who are coming through via different paths and I think that's sort of, uh, they'll be the main contenders for the derby. Our other special guest joins us via Skype, Luke Middlebrook from iRace in Singapore, the Hong Kong racing editor. Welcome back to the show, Luke. We had you on leading into the four-year-old series. What's your assessment of things after the first two legs of the series? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, Fiore is the one that's sort of piquing my interest. He continues to do little wrong and he's, um, you know, showing consistent ability throughout. Uh, obviously, Dark Dream disappointed in the Classic Cup. Um, and then, as Tom alluded to, you've got some of the uh, horses taking different paths in Waikiki and Richmond. OK, well, let's have a look at some of the lead-up form. Then we'll start off with the first leg of the series, the Hong Kong Classic Mile, won by Furore. As you can see here, Tom, he might have had things go his way. He did shove into the clear, but he then quickened up impressively. Yeah, he certainly did. He hit the line very nicely and went on to win well. Uh, Dark Dream, obviously a little bit unlucky. He copped a lot of the backwash from that concertina effect. Um, Ka Ying Star stuck on very well, as did Mission Tycoon, but uh, Furore was certainly the one who you uh, wanted to be on in the Classic Mile. And uh, yeah, it was a very, very good run in the Classic Cup as well. Was this the best performance from the four-year-old series so far, Luke? Uh, Furore's win in the Classic Mile? Um, yeah, I mean, for sure, from a from a visual perspective, it definitely was. Um, but as we know, he had all the luck in running that day while others, you know, suffered all that interference. Um, but, yeah, like, you know, looking ahead towards the derby, there's definitely a few that need to step up to the plate now. Uh, I thought there was a few disappointing runs in the Classic Cup. OK, well, let's look at the Classic Cup then. Surprisingly, in hindsight, as you referred to in the paper this week, Tom, Mission Tycoon was the runner-up in the Classic Mile, sent off at a huge price led throughout in the Classic Cup. Yeah, well, he went out at uh, $214 or so in the Classic Mile and then still $90-odd in the Classic Cup. And, uh, yeah, found the lead, got it uncontested and, and just kept finding. Um, interestingly enough, that both the trainer and the jockey, uh, you know, think he might struggle to get the 2,000 metres, but on what we've seen so far, you'd be mad to underestimate him. Is there that risk, Luke, that we could underestimate him? Because both legs of the series, he's gone around at big prices, but he's performed well both times. Oh, absolutely. And, um, you know, I thought in that race there would be more speed injected, uh, but there wasn't, uh, even though it was run at a, like, you know, a pretty efficient sort of gallop. But, um, you know, so I think you sort of have to throw the speed maps out the window because you just never know what's going to happen on the day. Uh, but, yeah, he's probably still underestimated a bit, I suppose. Dark Dream Fury were the two favourites in the Classic Cup. How did you assess their performances there? Uh, Dark Dream was certainly disappointing. I think he had the right run. Um, he sat just sort of second or third in running. And as I spoke to Zach Purton afterwards, he, he was really flat about it. He thought he had, you know, on the turn, he thought he was going to win. Um, and he's disappointed the way he didn't hit the line. Um, and Furore, well, you know, he was really the only runner to make ground. Um, and that's pretty positive going forward to the derby, I would have thought. Luke, uh, Dark Dream, so impressive when he won over 2,000 metres in December. Had excuses, yet performed well in the Classic Mile. Was his reputation dented, though, in the Classic Cup? Well, I suppose it was because he was such a short price favourite and there was a lot of market expectation for him to win. Whether or not he's just an out-and-out -out stayer and just couldn't you know, match the winner's turn of foot uh, under, uh, under those circumstances, uh, you know, we'll see what happens in the derby. Um, you know, as we know, like you know, looking back at past derby runs, they can be run at a muddling sort of tempo. Um, so, you know, like Fiore is the one for me that's shown good ability under different sort of race shape to, you know, produce a really good turn of foot. Uh, so, yeah, you know, here's one I want to side with at the moment. Hugh Bowman seemed to have a bit of confidence about him, even a defeat after the Classic Cup saying he'll be right on Derby Day. Absolutely. And I think the key is he just needs to draw a gate. So that's, that's certainly the hope for Hugh. 
Looking outside of the four-year-old series then, the other lead-up races coming into the derby. John Size has won three of the last seven Hong Kong derbies. In Richmond's proven over the distance, does he have the class to win a Hong Kong derby? Well, that's the big question, Mark. Obviously, he won over 2,000 metres in Class 2 last start. Um, really ground away nicely against some of the older horses. Um, he trialled well this morning at Sha Tin, uh, which is always positive. He's going to go to that 1,800 metre Class 2 at Sha Tin next week, and that'll be his final run towards the derby. He's got the rating, so he'll be there. Wouldn't be shocked if someone like Ryan Moore comes over to take the ride. Um, and he's got to be given a chance. And Luke, we saw him perform well in Australia, in Richmond, including a solid third in the Alistair Clark Stakes, over 2,040 metres at Mooney Valley. Um, what have you made of what he's done here in Hong Kong? I thought his debut one run was really good over the mile. Like, he showed a really good turn of foot that day. It was really strong late sectionals. Um, you know, that particular race over 2,000 metres then was, a, you know, uh, the polar opposite. It was run really fast early. Um, and I suppose we have to give some credence to Charity Go's run there too. Yeah, he, uh, I thought he stuck on really well in that race, Charity Go, considering they did go at a solid gallop there. Yeah, absolutely. He's certainly one who you can also throw in the mix as well. John Size, three of the last seven, won it last year with Ping High Star and a masterclass training performance from him. Is Y Cuckoo the Ping High Star of this year's four-year-old series? Certainly looks that way. Obviously hasn't started beyond 1,400 metres either, which is exactly the same as uh, Ping High Star. Don't know if he's as strong or as, um, certainly hasn't had as many race starts as uh, Ping High Star did. But what Waikuku did last start I thought was very impressive. He was three wide without cover throughout and um, really fought on hard against a good, tough, honest horse in good standing. So um, that's got to hold him in good stead for the derby. He's three from four, Luke, Waikuku, but it could easily be four from four. He's done very little wrong so far. Yeah, there's a bit of extra factor about him, isn't there? Um, yeah, I, I suppose the difference between he and Ping High Star is that they sort of have different racing patterns. Uh, Ping High Star was, you know, like a horse that just sort of got back and, you know, had an enormous turn of foot, which he showed in the derby. Waikuku sort of got that early tactical speed that he can use to his advantage. Um, but looking ahead, yeah, there's a certain X factor about him. And, um, yeah, time will tell. When you look at past history, over the past decade, every horse who's won the derby has been rated at least 102 on the day. This year, there are only four in that category. Dark Dream, Fury 104. Mission Tycoon, now after Sunday, 102. Waikuku, now 100. So on ratings, they look the four top hopes, you would think. Yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, history can give, provide a really good pointer for these things. And um, those horses have all put the runs on the board. So they're absolutely in it with a shot. That's what history says. That's what the ratings say. More interested, though, right now in what you two have got to say. Three on Derby Day. I know draws, all those sort of things are going to be important, but if you had to pick three right now, who would you be going with, Tom? Uh, I'd start with uh, Furore on top. Uh, I'd have Waikuku second, and then uh, Enrichment third. That'd be sort of where I'd be leaning. Obviously, Furore's done everything right throughout the classic, uh, classic series. And then, obviously, when we go to Waikuku, who could be the Ping High star of, of this year, and Enrichment's also coming through. Uh, a different sort of pattern as well. We know he gets 2,000 metres and, um, you know, you can never underestimate John Size. He's an absolute master. So Frankie Lord, John Size Derby then. I think that sounds about right. What about for yourself, Luke? Yeah, uh, I'm sticking with Fiore on top. Uh, yeah, he's just proven to me that he can perform under different circumstances and he's been consistent throughout. Uh, I'll still be, you know, sticking with Dark Dream as well. He deserves another shot uh, up, up in trip. Um, and then, yeah, Waikuku is the X Factor. Is there a, a Rafi, a Helene leading star, a Ho-Ho Khan, a Harmony victory? We mentioned Charity Go before. Is there one out of left field that could bob up on Derby Day? I certainly think uh, a Ho-Ho Khan and a Harmony victory, if races get run perfectly to suit them and everything goes their way, they can certainly put their hands up and, and be in the finish. Um, they'd be sort of the two for me. And Luke, for you, uh, is there anything outside of the square that could shock come March 17? Oh, well, you know, if the Classic Cup winner goes around at big odds then, again, then uh, let's give him a shout. Mission Tycoon, well, he's done it so far in the first two legs of the four-year-old series. Frankie Law trying to win all three in just his second season. Luke, Tom, thank you very much. Uh, Tom will be looking forward to reading the full build-up to the derby in the South China Morning Post and looking forward to finding the winners with you, Luke, through iRace. Thanks, guys. Cheers, mate. Thanks to Tom Biddington and Luke Middlebrook for joining us for this edition of HK Direct. The Derby's coming up.
in three weeks' time. In the more immediate future, we're racing on Sunday at Sha Tin, where the Yanoi Tong Cup is the trophy race at three o'clock. We've got eight races on the turf, two on the all-weather track, a couple of class twos to look forward to. Plus, full of beauty, we'll be trying to make it four in a row when he lines up in race nine. But that's it for this edition of HK Direct. You can join Tom Wood for the program next week on Thursday leading into Saturday racing. We look forward to your company at Sha Tin on Sunday. Until then, though, it's goodbye.